Hi, I'm Barry Godin and welcome back to BG Tips, episode 12. Um, today we're going to be talking about bike packing bags. Um, a huge request and I can totally understand why. Uh, I'm going to break it down into just everything to do with bags in this video and then we're going to break down into packing each bag and what do I put in each one. And I'm going to start off talking about the difference between bike packing and maybe touring but the best thing about all of this there is no wrong or right answer. Everyone does it differently. You'll do it differently. You need to find your own specific way of doing it and that will come through time and practice but Here's what my tips I can give you, but don't look at somebody else's setup and go, oh, that's wrong, that's wrong. They're all right. Everyone's right. You can do anything on anything. So just get out there, strap some bags on and have a load of fun. But the principles are, touring will use panniers on the side. This is ultimate luxury. It's the easiest way to do it. Buy a rack for about 20, 30 pounds, Buy some panniers, the best brand for panniers in the planet is Audlieb. Um, you can pretty much throw them in a river, you'll be dry inside. And the pleasures of it as well, you get a huge amount of space, um, bottomless space. Lob it all in, get to your campsite, just unhook your bags and off you go. So this is actually the best way of doing it. Why don't we do it? It's because the weight's on the sides of the bike and very much at the back. You can struggle when you're touring to try and spread the weight out between the front and back. Bike packing is always to do with frame bags and keeping everything center in the bike and the weight as low as possible. So when you're off-road or even on the road and you're sprinting, the bikes can be full very, very stable and in control. You almost forget there's bags on the bike, so they're not gonna flop you around. That's the whole reason why bike packing is to do with strapping and velcroing bags onto your bike and try and keep it in the center. Touring, I would call touring, when you just don't really care too much, you just lob bags on the side. But the people traveling around the world in panniers and fin tires, the things they are riding across are out of this planet, through Mongolia, through wherever deserts, they're just on touring bikes. Um, tourers are all quite new to bike packing, and I think the best way is to merge it all together, learn things from each other, there's nothing wrong with using panniers. There's nothing wrong with strapping a bag onto the rack even, which we'll come to later on. So there's no wrong and right. Everyone's right and learn from everybody. Get a top tip and put it into your setup. So you could say I have a bag issue. <laughs> so this is my range of backpacks and they're all by one brand, which is Osprey. Uh, Osprey makes a very comfortable backpack. And why are we talking about backpacks and the bike packing thing? Well, where did I start off? I started off on a full suspension mountain bike and we just went out. So the easiest way to go bike packing and while camping is use what you have first of all. You must have a backpack at home, put your tent, put your sleeping bag in it and get out there and get while camping or get camping, just get touring, get adventuring. So first things first, there's size. <laughs> and the other really cool thing about a lot of these, which you'll find when it comes to carrying water, um, is to do with the hydration bladders. They all have space for a hydration bladder. And if it's on your back, it's super easy to suck from all the time. Um, this one has it built in here. So it's on the strap. You can drink all the time. So a lot of people might have one that size and just carry water in it and a few tools. So carrying water on there makes it very easy to maintain. It's easily there. You grab the bladder out, you go and fill it up somewhere. This is what you're taking with you. And that will take you two to three liters in there and maybe one or two tools. So if you're going super lightweight or even just a day ride, because don't forget we all ride for just a day. It's not all um, camping. Um, you can just carry a few bits and bobs, a few spares and a few, even a bit of clothing in there. That'd be quite grand. I do find I need a little bit more space. Um, that was then always my, oh, some brake pads there. Um, that was always my riding bag, and that is the Raptor 14. That's a 14 litre bag, um, and it can carry loads in there. But I did find it was um, a bit small, and as it was a bit small, because it's only 14 litres, and that's what I find the problem with the other one is, is it's quite thin on the back. 
which means it flops around and jumps about. It's not that comfortable um, if you try and overfill it. So don't try and overfill these small bags. And then we go down to the Escapist series. These have been incredible. And you probably see a lot of my films, if I am wearing a backpack, which in the mountain biking films such as Hoyt Route, Tour de Mont Blanc, I'm carrying a backpack. And I think in Iceland, well, in Iceland, we started with a backpack as well. I had this one before. It was a 25 litre one. In Iceland, we want a bit more space. This gave us 32 litres, which a friend was like, don't forget each litre is a bottle of wine. And that was an extra um, seven bottles of wine <laughs> we could carry. And um, that's a huge bag. And what is cool about them? Loads of, you want the thing of your helmet. Loads of space inside. A lot of them actually, you can half in the, in the middle. And then in the bottom, you get the zip and you can even access stuff from the bottom. So if you're pouring with rain, you can keep your wet stuff in there or you can keep your camping stuff in the bottom and just quickly whip that out. And um, also they all carry a rain cover, which is really, really helpful. Keeping high vis, but also stopping your stuff getting soaking wet. Uh, so backpack wise, they actually are quite comfortable. But the idea with touring and bike packing is get the weight off your back. If you can get the weight off your back and onto the bike, oh, you feel so much nicer and you can sit there for a longer day. Um, carrying a backpack can get quite fatiguing and you get sore here and it's just not very nice for a long period of time. And I find when you're off road, you can throw the bike around a bit easier without this flopping weight going around. But I have a lot of experience with a backpack, so I can't <laughs> not tell you about them. And the quick one, obviously this is this one's called the Synchro, which is a new bag, which I use every single day of my life to commute to work in. And um, this has one of those airy back panels, which is super comfortable. And I've also never had a bag that spreads the weight so well on my body. Um, Osprey is particularly good for comfort and fit. Great straps here, the way they cut on your body. So an amazing brand when it comes to, um, when it comes to bags. So how do we get weight back onto the bike rather than being on your back? Well, that first trip, we did utilize our first saddle bag. So we've all used this kind of saddle bag to put in our tubes and stuff for that in it. But this was by Audelib at the time, and it's a lot bigger. And it was really, really good. This clipped on um, to the saddle rails, and then we actually built this little custom-made clip, which means you can actually go around the dropping seat post. We did find, though, on that first trip with suspension, uh, full suspension, the back wheel would compress and buzz against this bag quite a lot. So it was kind of, we then used various other things through these holes to kind of secure it on a bit tighter to stop it bouncing around and buzzing and maybe falling off this clip. Off-road, things get really tested hard. Um, On-road, that's where panniers come in, which you just clip them on nice and easily. But off-road, there's a lot of force and they're bouncing around and eventually those clips or plastic can snap and you get a bit of failure and a bag, what do you do if it's broken? You try and strap it to the bike. So that's where it all comes in. Off-road means things get really, really tested. And that's, <laughs> that's where my side of things are. Um, and that's where bike packing generally comes in into off-road, but it's now gone very gravel and long distance stuff. So now rather than using panniers, tourers or fast and light tourers are now going for this bike packing inline system. Probably the easiest way to start getting some weight onto the bike and easily accessible stuff, they're using these top tube accessory bags. They came from a triathlon background in my eyes. Um, that means these were top tube bags. You could then put your, your nuts and stuff in there and your feeding gels. Um, but off-road, when this does up, it's really, really low and it was very, very floppy. That was the first bag I had. I could put my phone in there and all my battery bricks and that was more than enough for that first trip. And it's done me really quite well over the years and waterproof. This is then what I went up to next, um, next size up. That means I could put more and more stuff in there so because my kit grew, microphones and other things I wanted to carry. And now on, I then use two top tube bags. I use one at the front for all my microphones and stuff and things I need to get onto. And this one, which is quite a large one, and this sits just at the back of the bike. And that's just by the seat post. This is underneath my legs, but it doesn't get in the way. It generally flops around a bit. And in there is quite big, and I get all my nibbles and bars in there. Um, I'm going to talk in another video. We're going to actually pack these bags, and I'll show you what I put in each one, and how do I get it all on the bike. Um, but today's just kind of bags, but top tube bags for any sport whatsoever, even commuting. 
they're absolutely brilliant. Um, you can carry two on the top, that means you get loads of capacity on the bike straight away, and you haven't got to change anything else. Grab a saddle bag on the back, you then got more weight on there, and expand it from there. And just another saddle bag to show you when we're doing full suspension trips. So for the last two of the Mont Blanc, I use this bag, and this is by Specialized, and I have to found this is the best rear saddle bag if you're using a four sus. Um, you can actually, oh, that's with that. That's what that gas can was I couldn't find the other day. Oh, anyway, we found it now. Um, this was great. It rolls up, good bit of Velcro, and we actually carried all of our kind of hygiene stuff in that. Because that's quite heavy. It's bottles, it's liquid, and that means we get the weight off of our back, get it onto the bike. But it didn't affect the way the bike rode because we could still get full compression of our suspension, and this would sneak out of the way. And it expanded as well, and then Velcro's on. It only fell off once. Um, but I have to say, it's pretty damn good. I have, would recommend it. Uh, so saddlebags, there's loads on the market, loads out there. You go and look at them, see what you can fit in them. Um, that's a slightly bigger saddlebag. As we work our way along, we'll see they get bigger and bigger and bigger. But the next bit we need to talk about is the front of the bike. So this idea of carrying things on your handlebars. And that starts off with using a harness. There's lots of harnesses out there. You don't 100% need a harness to get started. If you're gonna do longer, harder trips or just wanna get into it, then getting a harness is really gonna help you. I've done many trips. This is the first uh, dry bike I had and it's 20 liters. It's called the uh, it's the air lock, but dual ended, and the dual end is really quite good. Um, I find when the dual ended, if you're using these straps, you can then balance the weight in the middle in the way you pack. I find the one ended ones, uh, the air locks, they're called, um, by Outkit uh, or any dry bag, you kind of end up filling the bottom, and you might have too much at the top or too little, and it gets very lopsided. Dual ended ones, not only can you get to stuff either end, um, but you always forget what end it was. <laughs> I put my tent in there. Um, it means you can actually balance it up better. This then straps onto this. Um, but I say many times I have just literally got a strap, put that to handlebars. If you want to get started, get one of these at about 15 quid, put your tent, your sleeping bag, your spare clothes, everything in there and your roll mat. You'll be shocked what I can get into one of these. Um, and that means you can just strap it on and go and have a wild night away. That's the easiest way to get started. What does the harness do? This has got rods inside it, uh, which means they're nice and stiff. Um, it provides a stable platform for this flopping around. It locks it into place. That attaches to my forks. I'll take you through it in another video how it actually fits. That goes around my forks, which provides support, and I can strap stuff onto that. And on the back, that's what goes onto the handlebars, but I also attach more points to other bags that go on this back. So it's actually quite a good starting point and I recommend there's loads of harnesses out there. Get yourself one and uh, if you want to go off road and that's going to really help you out to stop it wobbling about. So more easy, obvious ways of getting stuff onto your bike is using bottle cages. These just go on your bike. You can put your water on there rather than on your back. You then get into the world of big bottle cages and these kind of like um, cargo cages. This one is the Blackburn Outpost cage. I once had the salsa cages and uh, I snapped two very, very quickly. Um, I know everyone's going to say you overloaded them. Yes, I overloaded them. Um, but I had two snapping one trip and that was in Iceland. I would never recommend them again. That's because I had bad experiences with them. I went to this Blackburn outpost cage and this has survived probably four years of abuse. It's now, I actually just noticed it is snapped now, but it's been sturdy as anything. But this has all these cage mounts. This can go in the frame of your bike. And that first trip in Devon, I literally strapped this into the middle of my bike, got a dry bag, wedged the dry bag in there, strapped it in, and that was it. So it can be as simple as that. Get a cage, even make one of these, bend it open, put a bag on it, strap it in. Then I actually hung one underneath as well of the bike. I'm on that video, I'll show you um, how one underneath. That's all my tools and spares, and I thought it'd be a great place to have it. It's got mucky and horrible. Um, but get some cargo cages. These go on my fork legs now. So they hold these front bags on my bike. And you can strap this on in various ways. On my forks, I have three bolts, which means this goes on nice and strong. Um, but you can actually use Jubilee clips, which is a plumbing thing. Um, and that goes around, you can lash it on. And that means you can put them onto suspension forks. 
Um, putting weight on suspension is quite difficult, and so these are a great way out of doing that. Um, yeah, so they're really, really versatile, but don't think the obvious where they must go on the fork legs. You can put them in the bike, you can put the Versky in the bike, you can get something that comes off the back of the bike to put a frame bag in. You can also weld these onto the side of um, a rack. I've seen someone do that where they had a bag on the top of a rack and they had welded two of these onto the back and carried small pouches. So it still stopped the weight flopping around and kept the weight central in the bike. But yeah, they're a great thing to have. And um, I do recommend this Blackburn one. It's done me so well over the years. And um, I do overload them past the weight limits. And this one's held up the longest. But rather than using the bottle cage, and wasting all that space inside my frame with just two water bottles, which carries about, each water bottle is 500 ml or 750, that gives me a liter and a half. I use a frame bag. There's all that wasted dead space using um, a small frame bag. So I go for a full frame bag. This is by Alp Kit again, and this I bought for my Genesis. It was cut out, you send out a cardboard cutout, it's custom made, it costs you 70, 80 pounds, worth every single penny because you don't lose a single bit of space. I've used lots of other manufacturers ones where uh, they just are sizes you just buy, but you lose a lot of dead space in this frame bag. Why do I like a frame bag more than anything else in the world? Where'd you put your tent poles? My tent poles fit in there perfectly. Yes, depends on the size of your bike. If you're a very, very tall person, I'm not. You'll get loads of space. Uh, if you're a small person, you might struggle to get your tent poles in, but people find other places to put them. But that just fits in there perfectly. Then I carry loads of tripods, pumps, you name it, you can put it in there. But the main reason is water. So in my frame bag, I carry a bladder, and I showed you this before. It means I can have that hose always to the front of the bike, and I've got no wasted space. So, if you want to go a little bit further and carry more stuff on the bike, rather than on your back, get a frame bag. So, breaking this down, we have a frame bag that fills the middle of your bike. We use the cargo cages just to put a dry bag on. And you can then put dry bags anywhere on your bike. If you can't afford one of these, just buy a bottle cage and wedge your bag in and strap it on and get going. And then you've got the front bag, which uses the harness and then uses just random dry bags to just strap onto the front. So you can see you're spreading the weight out. We haven't talked about the back yet, but you've got weight at the front, which you don't normally have when you're touring, weight into the middle, and especially carrying two or three liters of water, that really keeps the weight nice and low. I carry my tools in here as well, so that's another very heavy item. Temp poles, that keeps everything, the weight nice and low. And the big bulky stuff, such as the down sleeping bag and my down jacket, go a little bit higher at the front and the back. So it's not only getting the bags right, it's also getting the packing right, so you're spreading the weight over the bike, so it feels nicely balanced on the trails. So talking about dry bags, uh, these are the first set I ever bought, and they've been abused to the point of destruction. That was the first saddle bag I had. It was really, really smart. I bought out kit to start off with. A friend once had a dry bag of theirs. I discovered the brand. I then bought into them heavily by literally buying everything from them. They seem to have known bike packers from the start in terms of they've developed massively over the years, but they're really, really well built. So first of all, that was my first dry bag. I couldn't put a lot in it. And it had these cool straps, which that was broken. Um, I like yellow, so it looked like a bumblebee, so my design was black and yellow on the bike. So if you notice in my first ever trip, the Devon trip, this was looking rather the wrong angle. It's rather flat and floppy. Then then you work out how to actually strap these bags onto your bike over time, where you kind of put a bit more vertical and get the weight in as close as possible. So these are the dry bags I've been talking about. Um, these are tougher outside dry bags. I use other thin dry bags for inside the bike, keeping things slippery and organized. But these ones are the actual outside bags. But they're not that expensive. They're about 10 pounds again. Um, and these are really, really versatile. You can build up your own way and mix and match as you go along. That was the bag I used as that kind of first frame bag in my trip. That's when in that cage I was showing you. And you just strap it on. And um, they've got loads of strapping points and they're submergible as well, which I have tested. Um, water does eventually get inside them, but yeah, they're really, really cool. I've got a whole range of sizes. That's a three litre one, 
and I've got some other Leeds Ridge ones here. Um, these are those front bags. Uh, they all look a bit destroyed because things buzz against them, tires go through them. So just be careful where you're putting your tent in your sleeping bag. Don't put it in the vulnerable spot where it could get buzzed by tire. Um, I got really scared that this one went through and I thought that was the end of my sleeping bag because it would have ripped open. So just keep an eye on them. Uh, and that's why I keep everything dry bagged inside these because holes do appear and because I'm a violent rider. And uh, yes, so, but they've been brilliant to kind of hold things onto the bike. That first saddlebag came with this liner, which I thought was brilliant. So you literally can pack this up and it slots inside that one and you just pull it out when you're done. But that I think is just a few quid, about 10 or 20 quid. And then you can actually use that if you wanted to as a saddlebag on its own. So it hasn't got to cost a fortune. Um, if you get that on the back uh, and it's going to do you well, just strap it on well. Um, and that's really quite smart. So that's what I have used in the past. Another brand I've then used is Audlib. So I've got the full range of Audlib bags here. I was given once to test them and they are waterproof. And that's the massive selling point out of them. They are waterproof, they're guaranteed waterproof, even though this one now has a hole because it's buzzed through it. But the material is amazing. Um, why did I not necessarily like them? I used them on a trip and I just found, and it will come to when I show you how to pack the bike. It's very long <laughs> and it's just very thin, which means you can't stand things like a steam bag vertically. You have to put them that way, which means there's loads of wasted space. Um, to, to keep things waterproof, ah, top tip, how to keep things waterproof. Three rolls it has to be. That's one, two, and three. So that shows you the depth of the bag. Show that again. Things to be waterproof, any dry bag, one two and then three you have to be three rolls to be waterproof it becomes quite small um, and not very deep and I couldn't get that much in it they got a cool accessory pouch which goes on the front which was quite nice actually um, you can put loads of bits and pieces in there if you overfill it again you need to be able to fold it down as one two and three it becomes quite a lot smaller and that was not enough capacity for me um, they are really, really good bags, but the way I pack, I kind of got stuck in a certain way of packing and they just didn't work out. The frame bags were really, really good and they show you how waterproof they are by going So, that is waterproof and airtight. They are incredible for that reason. They're not custom fitted. This one actually fitted quite well in one of my bikes. They come in two sizes. They come in a small, medium and a large, I believe. That's the small and that's the large. Um, we've used them on a few trips. I find these straps uh, weren't quite long enough to go over some top tubes. They kind of didn't fold over very well. They didn't, definitely didn't go down to there. They're just a few teething problems. They're quite a new brand to the bike packing bags. Yes, Touring, Pan Airs, they're the best in the world and always have been and always probably will be. Um, but for myself, I carry a water bladder in here, which means I had to have the zip open and have my hose coming out of there. And that means it wasn't so waterproof. On my other frame bag, I actually have a little Velcro hole, which allows when the zip's closed on the side, the hose to come out the top of the bag, which also means it's not interfering when I'm getting stuff in and out as I'm using it, such as my tripod and various things like that, which I use all the time. Um, so this bag, has a little downfall in that if you're going to carry water inside there. The other downfall is as soon as it fills up with water, it holds on to the water. Um, has a little joiner clip, which again, if you're carrying a lot of stuff in there, isn't going to help you out. I can just about get my tent poles in this one. So again, be careful, but it's a tight squeeze um, and you're not going to get much more in there. So just be aware of it. Try these bags out before you buy them um, and just see how it works in your setup. But yes. Audlib is an amazing brand. One bag I used of theirs for ages was the rear bag, the rear seat pack. Um, I carried on using this for a good couple of years and it proved very, very good. It had an amazing capacity. It was a lot bigger than that tiny yellow outkit bag you saw I had. So one, two, and then three. That was the size of it. And if anyone notices what I carry with me, 
That's brilliant. Oh, wrong clip. Um, it is outstanding. It is waterproof. I did have a hip flask of whiskey empty inside of it. And yes, everything of mine smells of whiskey because the whiskey didn't leave it or soak into the material, which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, it has this little compressor thing so you can actually get the air out of it. Uh, it was really, really good. The only negative was is the way it held onto the bike. When you're jumping and really being quite aggressive with the bike, everything on the weight capacity is done on this clip here. And I did have the clip break a few times on me. Um, the waggly pack thing doesn't bother me. Um, I know everyone's going to ask about anti-sway, anti-waggle stuff. I think if your tail's waggling, everyone knows you're having a good time. <laughs> Before we move away from Audlib, the bum bag. The bum bag is back in business and is very stylish nowadays, particularly in the mountain biking world. This is one by Audley, which I picked up for an absolute bargain. And it was, it's waterproof. I had a thought of a drone going in the bottom. Uh, I think it's designed for kind of running or something like that, but it has a really good padded side belt, has bottle cage kind of holders here. That could be quite good on me for the future. I haven't used it yet, but I want to use it. Um, and I think that's where the drone might come in if I'm doing a longer trip or something like that. Good pouch, um, looks super comfortable. And you can also adjust the fit of it and big waist strap. So another bag by Audlib. It's just, uh, I don't know what it's called actually, but yeah, really, really nice, really, really smart. So what do I use nowadays? I've gone back to a full out kit setup. They made this super huge rear bag, which finally came up with a replacement for the Audlib. And this thing is enormous. I think it's 18 liters. Uh, when it's rolled up, it's pretty big capacity. There's a few things that are done really, really well. This massive back plate here, you can actually buy a thing which means you can put the anti-sway and whatever it's called lock thing in the bottom, which is really quite smart, but I find it doesn't quite go close enough to the seat post, but I need to adjust it maybe and have a look into it deeper. But great set of straps um, and the way it works, big Velcro, huge size range, good bungees on the top for putting stuff. So I have to recommend don't put stuff on your bungees. I find it falls off and got sucked into my back wheel. Um, and a really good sturdy hardcore bottom. So that's now my go-to rear seat pack, which has been tried and tested and has done very, very well. Quick top tip from Outkit as well. They do loads of repairs, sometimes for a very small charge, if not for free. I've had a few zips repaired and stuff. So they're all about trying to keep things going and making more life out of them. So they will put patches in and repair stuff. Um, but it's been really, really smart. Um, so that's now my new rear seat pack. Then out at the front, I used the harness. This is the Kanga, um, which I've used for many, many years, five years now, and it's been really impressive. Really, really stiff. I've sewn it up a few times at the bottom. I've had the poles fall out the bottom and buzz on the wheel, but a little bit of sewing, you know, repair it again or send it back to them to get it do it for you. That's been really quite good. That couples up with their Airlock Duo bag, dual bag, and that's been really impressive. Gone orange nowadays uh, to be more even more fluoro. Um, that, as I said before, keeps you balanced. You can pack it really, really well. And the next video, I'm going to take you through packing each of these bags and what do I put in them. And you'll see particularly why I love this impressive object. Why do I have a few of them? So, on a few trips, if I have to carry, if I want to, and I do carry all of my food for two weeks, such as this picture, I'll use a rack at the back. But instead of putting stuff on the side of the rack, I then put another one of these on the top of the rack. And what is impressive about that, you can then put your food on there. Yes, the bike's heavy to start off with, but as the week went on, this got smaller and smaller and smaller, and so much so, eventually you take it off the top, you just put it in one of the other bags, and you just have a rack with nothing on it, but quite good. Some people are too small to fit a seat pack on the back of the bike. So why not have just have a rack and strap a 20 litre dry bag on the top? There's nothing wrong with it. It keeps your weight in the right place. It's still centered on the bike. Don't put it on the side, but put it on the top. That might be a way around if your frame's too small to try and fit a bag in it. There's loads of brands out there doing new things, which kind of means you can wedge them in. Um, but yeah, really, really good. Just buy a cheap dry bag, buy a rack, strap them on.
Whilst we're talking about the dry bags, I then on the forks have two five litre dry bags. Um, these are abused. You can see them buzzed by everything. This is what goes in these cages. They strap on there and that carries food again if I'm going for a long trip. So you see the way my bike will expand and get smaller in terms of the packing as we go along. So like Old Lib, they have an accessory pouch that goes on the front front of the bike. That attaches to the Kanga harness, which then has my dry bag on the top. And this is called a Roo pouch. That then goes on there and that completes my system. Um, the first time I got this, I realized they had changed the clips and the amount I cursed them that day, uh, <laughs> I won't tell you but it's actually helped me a lot. And I'll show you when I put it on the bike. These, that goes around that. And then these actually go around the handlebars as well. So it even helps hold the dry bag on the front of the bike and stops it flopping even more. So you can get more tension from these long straps here, rather than just relying on two bits of Velcro to hold a front bag and accessory bag and everything on the bike. So the Roo pouch is brilliant, but as it sticks so far off the front of the bike, you'll very quickly burn a hole in it. Um, I've put a cook set in there. That means it gives them one of my um, stem cells we'll talk about in a minute back. But the cook set can fit in there. Often my um, water bottles fit in there. I then keep hydration in there. Money phone keys, which you may not get to all through the tour of the bike. So um, that's really quite smart for me and it adds quite a lot of capacity in terms of it gives some things close to hand back again because you can dive in there, grab some stuff out and carry on my day. We spoke about my top tube bags, which I run two of, one on the front, one on the back, the back one for bars and nibbles. That's my brand new front one, which is gonna be quite smart, I think. And then that carries my phone, my microphone, other stuff I might need to get to really, really quickly. We've covered the frame bag. That's the frame bag I use, the same custom fitted frame bag I've always had in my whole life. Um, but it's, it's done the trick and so many miles. Even it's not that worn, it's got a few holes, but yeah, been really, really good over the years. And then another amazing object you can just add to your bike, even for short journeys, are these things called stem cells. So these go onto the stem and they hook on and hook onto your handlebars and they are just there on the front of my bike. These are brilliant. And I went into the last video about the different ranges. That was the first one I ever had, which was really, really good. It fitted my cooking set. My whole cooking set will fit inside there. Then I've got some newer ones, which are quite smart looking, a bit <laughs> less tatty than that one. Although this one did have a little um, fabric brick on the outside, but if you put something in it, you can't get it out if you put something inside. Um, and these have been really, really good. But I recently just purchased these. These are looking amazing, a bit more capacity again, which means the whole bike won't be wedged out. I do find when it comes to touring, using a pannier and bike packing, Touring, you might have spare space to stick a sandwich, stick something for the evening. Bike packing, there's not much spare space. Um, you are using everything to the max. If you're not wedged it out, you're not gonna take it. You're gonna just put it somewhere else in the bike. Um, so I do find bike packing, you've gotta be careful about completely filling everything up. Because if you do buy something, you just can't put it in there. You can't transport anything. That's where my little foldable backpack comes out because I can then add capacity to me and then carry on and then fold it away later on if I can. Um, so that's one thing to think about with bike packing. There's no spare space. It's an absolute faff. It takes ages to get thing in, things in and out. It takes ages to pack up your bike in the morning. Generally, I would close my tent up and give it an hour. I'm still there strapping, twiddling bags on my bike. I'm not the fastest bike packer out there, but I quite enjoy the faff of strapping things on and tightening things up and sorting things out. Um, but do be aware, if you want easy peasy, get a backpack, just go for it. Get panniers, just go for it. If you want to get into the sport, that's where these bags you strap on kind of work out. But you don't need to buy the Pacific bag that I'm using or anything like that. Just buy some cheap dry bags to start off with, strap them to the bike, get out there and get having an adventure. So that's it for bags for now. I hope that's given you a really good overview of what we've been using throughout the years and the way my setups developed over time and actually the way some things have never changed. They've just kind of changed the bags as they come along and things get mildly better. Um, but the biggest thing I think you've learned is just get something, strap it on your bike and get going and learn from experience. For the next few videos, we're gonna be packing the bags and showing you what I put in each one, how I disperse the weight over the bike. And then we're gonna put the bags onto the bike, showing you that and then we're gonna get outside and get adventuring. But until next time, carry on with your adventures, and thanks for following the journey. 
Ciao for now. Oh.